In My Hero Academia, the final war to decide it all is here, and wasting no time at all, we would kick things off with the most important fight of them all, Deku vs Shigaraki. To back him up, we would have the likes of Bakugo, Sun Eater, Best Genus, Edshot, Nejide, whose hair was now shorter, and Miruko, whose hair was also a bit shorter, and if you notice, her ear that had previously gotten clipped a bit in the first war was now a bit different from the other one, and I think she looks amazing. Not to mention that new support item prosthetic arm of hers. Your support means everything, so if you enjoy our My Hero Academia videos, be sure to drop a like to let us and the algorithm know, and subscribe to Plot Armor with notifications on. Everything had been prepared for the sake of securing Deku's victory. The only problem was, Deku was not there. Best Genius would begin to panic after being told this by Bakugo, but even Bakugo didn't know where Deku was. He only saw that Deku got dragged into a whole different warp gate portal, from which point Sun Eater would chime in by saying that if Deku isn't there, the conditions required for their success would not be met. So suffice to say, they didn't really have a contingency or backup in mind here. Everything needed to go exactly as planned, which, in a case like this, probably wasn't the best decision for them to make. But now, of course, we know that Deku had been taken through a different portal on account of Toga's intervention. One might expect these heroes to have communicators of some sort to help figure out where he is, but I suppose not. Maybe they had concerns that there would be an information leak of some sort, but then again, we did have All Might communicating to the likes of Fat Gum and Monoma, so who knows. Nedjure would propose that they let everyone know the current situation, however. Meanwhile, Miruko, as per usual, was eager to kick things off and have a bit of fun. What is pretty much the very same approach she had to breaking into the doctor's lab by her lonesome during the first war. And for a battle junkie like herself, of course this was exciting as right now they were up against the greatest villain in history. A title that I'd say is more than deserved by Shigaraki as he is not only the strongest ever, but thanks to his actions, an entire country pretty much collapsed with all others praying for his downfall. Shigaraki would then take notice of the horizon being low, then realizing that they were floating in the sky. None of his villainous allies were there with him, he was isolated. And at this point, Shigaraki looks like an actual monster. He has no pupils, is crustier than ever, and even on the hand in which he had lost a few fingers, there are now partially formed ones taking their place. That being said, despite all this, Shigaraki still is not 100% complete. As if he were, he probably wouldn't ask to not be interrupted by himself. The bonding process to be found amongst the two sides of himself was nearing completion, and it's something we can look forward to in the times to come. And maybe we're the only ones here, but KJ and I have been hoping to see a smooth skin Shigaraki to signify this perfection. Shigaraki would then place his hand on the ground and begin to use his decay quirk. Now, if you notice, there are a multitude of slender lines to be found all over his body. And based on our understanding of what happened to the fourth user of One For All, the these lines are an indication of an entity exceeding the point of singularity. This is the body struggling to house an overload of quirks. In theory, once Shigaraki is truly perfect, this should not be a thing anymore. But as he decayed the ground beneath himself, something rather strange would happen. Suddenly, several metallic plates would spring up from the ground as they fell apart thanks to Shigaraki's decay quirk, as they also propelled him way up high, from which point Shigaraki would slam right into the barrier system, which would severely electrocute him, causing his body to to begin seizing up. And although it wouldn't take too long for him to get a grip, Best Genius would not waste the opportunity to bind and slam the villain to the ground with a whole lot of force. Best Genius would then let it be known that so long as Shigaraki was moving with the combined use of his mind and body, exposing him to a strong enough current of electricity would cause it to seize up, even if only momentarily. And despite him being as powerful as he happens to be, time is most certainly of the essence in combat, even down to the seconds elapsing. Shigaraki would manage to break free of the fibers, which I can only imagine are the same durability as he once used to restrain Giganto Machia, which should just go to show just how strong this guy is now. But from there, perhaps on account of the all for one consciousness within himself, Shigaraki would begin to break down what had just happened. The metallic block from the ground sprung up high and disintegrated as a countermeasure against Shigaraki's decay quirk. With decay as it is currently, the destruction spreads by way of contact. And so, if the affected surface were to isolate itself, there would be no spread. It's a pretty ingenious design for sure and one that we would learn a bit more about momentarily. But Shigaraki wasn't all too concerned because at this rate, either way, the place would be ruined in no time at all. And he would furthermore speak about Best Genius' desire to keep him suspended in air for as long as possible to avoid him destroying their limited terrain. However, Genius would correct him as he wasn't concerned at all, as in a matter of seconds to take the place of those removed blocks would be brand new ones. For Shigaraki, this was a fight for survival, but these heroes were playing Minecraft in 
creative mode. They could replace whatever would be lost as best genius would taunt the villain. This place was a death trap and one made specifically to deal with Shigaraki, a so-called coffin in the skies. And from there we would get a look at the many heroes facilitating this incredible battleground. First up there would be Power Loader and Cementos, as Cementos would make up for what had already been lost. We would then have Hatsume Mei requesting specific parts from Momo as these two ingenious young creatives would finally meet. And behind Momo, to make up for her lost calories would be the cook hero, Lunch Rush. None of these heroes underestimated the threat Shigaraki posed, from exceedingly lethal long range attacks to speeds comparable to All Might during his prime. Finding a way to feasibly take him down was no small feat. However, the information they were able to gather on account of his fights against Deku and later Star and Stripe allowed them to facilitate these developments. In fact, it was all on account of Atsume's ingenuity. Principal Nezu, as we know, designed Yue's evacuation and anti-decay systems, while Hatsume devised a way to overhaul it all, dividing the ground into smaller blocks while also giving them drone-like properties. Thanks to Momo, they were able to bypass their lack of materials during these turbulent times, and they all worked around the clock to get all of this going with such a limited time frame. For as reckless as Star's intervention may have been, the time she bought them all was invaluable, as otherwise they wouldn't have been able to have a chance to properly fight back. That being said, the biggest hurdle they faced in these preparations was facilitating the crazy amount of energy required to keep all of this moving, while also powering the electromagnetic barrier they had in place. From which point, we would have Kaminari and a few others powering this thing up. Next to him would be Comic Man from Class 1B, whose onomatopoeia based quirk, Comic, allowed him to contribute a bit as well. And next to him would actually be Nejire's best friend and fellow Class 3A student, Yu Yu Haya who would now also be revealed to possess an electricity-based quirk of some sort. She would tell the first years to focus up, as Kaminari would actually correct her by saying that they're technically in their second year now, although school has still been suspended. Comic Man would share in Kaminari's enthusiasm, claiming them to the key to the plan working out and putting Shigaraki behind bars, which only pumped Kaminari up more. Everyone was contributing to this battle in some way, and it wasn't for the honor or glory like had previously been the case in their superhuman society. Everyone involved in all this were true heroes through and through who were willing to risk everything and intended to put an end to Shigaraki's reign of terror once and for all. Bakugo, Miruko, Best Genius, Sun Eater, all of them rushed to attack the villain simultaneously. As just then, Shigaraki would decide he had enough and would attempt to use his impact blast quirk to blow a hole in the barrier, but it would not work, as Bakugo would mock him, questioning if he had already forgotten what happened during their last battle. As from behind a barrier, it would be the likes of Aizawa, the normal hero Manuel, and Monoma. And at this point, Monoma was in contact constant contact with Eraserhead, allowing him to make use of his Eraser quirk as his hair flew up just like Aizawa's would. And at the same time, Manuel was keeping Monoma's eyes from getting dry just like how he had for Aizawa in the past. All this had been set in place for the sake of Deku getting the upper hand in this fight. However, again, Deku was not here at all, and that most definitely complicated things. As from which point, Shigaraki's hand would begin to contort and sprout several others into what was a horrifying mass of mutated extremities. Miruko would call out to Bakugo, who now goes by the hero named Dynamite, and question what this move was, but Bakugo had never seen it before, so he had no idea. This was not the same Shigaraki from the first war that was falling apart. He was very much on the verge of completion here, as suddenly a whole slew of these wretched fingers would slam into the body of Miruko. Thankfully, the guy can't use the K right now, but good lord! This looks to be a dangerous situation to be in, and I'm sure it is, but we still have not gotten to to see Miruko's support item and what it can do, so the fun has only just begun. And at that, Shigaraki, whose pupils had finally begun to come back, would express how disappointed he was by Eraserhead, the hero he used to think was so cool. But come on, of course Eraserhead had been so severely injured in the previous war that there was no way he could live up to Shigaraki's expectations. But I'm sure we can live up to yours, so be sure to subscribe to Plot Armor with notifications on. Check out our new channel, Plot Armor Comics, for all the best superhero stories available, as in less than a month, and only five videos, we managed to hit 10,000 subscribers, so be sure to get over there before things get really crazy. But when it comes to bringing you some of the best My Hero Academia content on the platform, Plot Armor has you covered. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.